Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about names. So believe it or not, there exists one other person in the world, or at least on Facebook, who has the exact same name as me. Valeria Tarina. And it's a whole story about how I actually ended up meeting this woman, but essentially what we found out about each other upon like the very first meeting was that we had so much in common. Not only our name, but essentially our whole destiny and our life story had this big similarity in themes. Both of us were born in Russia. Both of our mothers got remarried to a foreigner and then moved to that foreign country. Both of us like to speak and know how to speak a number of languages. Both of us are really into sports. Both of us are very interested in psychology. She even got her PhD in psychology while I just practice it casually. Even the same handwriting and the same way of dotting our eyes sometimes when we like to be fancy and cute. And we also really like all the world's cultures and like traveling. We even kind of could look as if we're maybe related or like she's my aunt or something. And that really made me wonder like, does the name really impact like who you become and does it actually affect anything in the future about you and what you're like, what you're interested in, and what you end up doing overall. In recent years, there have been a ton of publications and research about how there's like many surprising ways that your name impacts who you become and a bunch of choices that you make. So some are like, if your name is easy to pronounce, people will favor you more. If your name is common, you're more likely to be hired. If your last name is closer to the beginning of the alphabet, you can get into a better school. If your last name is closer to the end of the alphabet, you're more likely to be an impulse spender. You're more likely to work in a company that matches your initials. Men with shorter first names are overrepresented in the C-suite, while women at the top are more likely to use their full names. Why is that though? Well, in short, what I found after doing a ton of research into the topic, is this. Your name is a word that refers to you. Due to the nature of a word being a literal representation of the thing, person, idea that it refers to, you subconsciously want to grow into our idea of what your name stands for and means. This is called a self-fulfilling prophecy. And the source of the meanings and associations behind your name come from a society and culture-based history of what people with those names were like, as well as some more minute things like the sound symbolism effect. So in this video, I will explain this in further detail and illustrate what's really happening by answering these following questions. Why do we feel inclined to grow into our name? How does our name impact what our face looks like? Where do our perceptions for a given name come from? Where do our perceptions for a name we've never heard of come from? How much does your name impact you if you've changed your name? And how much is your name related to your identity? And timestamps, as always, will be either in a pinned comment or in the description below. So, let's get started with my favorite part. Why do we feel inclined to grow into our name? So I mentioned before in my thesis, that your name is just a word that is used to literally represent you. Similarly to how like a portrait would represent you. Your name is the first thing that is truly yours and completely unrelated to your physical appearance. When you hear your name, you know somebody is referencing you, either talking about you or calling out to you. You know whatever it is, it's connected to you. So there's a thing in psychology called cognitive dissonance. Basically, a simple example of this, suppose you read some kind of hateful comment about yourself online, and it makes you really upset. But then you realize that it was actually one of your friends who wrote that comment. In your head, it doesn't make any sense for a friend to write something mean about you, so despite your initial hurt, you justify it to yourself and say, Oh, <laughs> I mean, it was just a joke, right? <laughs> so funny. So all people you and I, everyone, experiences cognitive dissonance. And our brains are programmed to try to minimize the mental discomfort that it brings. Where this comes into play with our names, and why we tend to grow into them, is because if society labels our name 
to mean or represent something that doesn't really align with how we view ourselves. Like if their idea of what Valeria looks and acts like isn't at all what I think I should look and act like, then we experience this cognitive dissonance and subconsciously try to change to make those two things have as least distance as possible from each other. Therefore, with time, there is a self-fulfilling prophecy here. We have a given name that represents us, and in order to feel comfortable and recognized for who we really are, we try to unite our intimate identities with our social selves. All right, so it makes total sense that we can switch up some of our behavior or life choices or even personality to conform to our name. But apparently, your name impacts even how your face looks. I know that sounds kind of bonkers, but stay with me. So there was a study done in the Hebrew University of Jerusalem where researchers showed participants a photo of a stranger along with four multiple choice options for a potential name. Participants were then asked to choose which name out of the four is most likely the name that corresponds with the person. They then also repeated the experiment with computers to guess the matching name. What's absolutely crazy though is that both people and computers can guess the correct name for the person at above chance level. So it was like around 35% correct. Whereas chance would be 25%, so one out of four. So here's a photo of one of the guys that were shown to people in the experiment. And here's the multiple choice of what names you can choose for him. Comment down below, which name do you think he is and what country you're from? No cheating. <laughs> All right, so this handsome man, his name is Dan. Did you get it right? I'll be honest, I thought his name was gonna be Joseph. Oh well. Now, here's my favorite thing that I learned from this entire investigation. The parts of your face with the most valuable information of what your name might be are all voluntary sections. So those include your hairstyle, the locations of different wrinkles on your face, your eyes, and other voluntary choice spots indicated by this heat map, which the computers were able to generate. However, what's also very important to note here is that these indicators are all culturally dependent and they only work if you socially use your given name. What that means is that if you're from America and you're guessing which name corresponds to this guy from France, you're not gonna do well your guessing rate of success drops way below chance. So now I guess I don't feel too bad about guessing Dan wrong. <laughs> Similarly, if the person in the photograph has the given name Louis Armstrong, but actually goes by the name Sachmo, then guessing the name drops below chance as well. Okay, next question. Given that all the parts of our face, which give information about what our name might be, are all culturally dependent, how do they even develop in the first place? Where do society's stereotypes of our names come from? In short, they come from everywhere. I'd say they're mainly based in a historical background, as well as an average of all of the people that you've ever met or heard of with that name. So imagine this, you're a hiring manager staring at a pile of folders on your desk, each with a resume inside. You pick the first one and on top of the folder you see Michael Chang. Immediately, your brain's first instinct is to do an instantaneous statistical analysis on anything and everything in your brain that could help you paint a mental picture of who Michael Chang is. You'll deduce that it's a guy, a second gen Chinese American, maybe bilingual, etc. You'll also recall every Michael that you know, whether it's the Michael that bullied you in the third grade or the Michael you had a crush on in high school or your best friend, Michael, and you use all of that to judge this new Michael based on all of their stereotypes. Additionally, there's pretty interesting historical evolution of how naming conventions and perspectives changed with time in America and England, which definitely impacts how we feel about names. In pre-urban times, people were only known by a single name. For example, the Anglo-Saxon name Bernhardt. Then, after the Norman Conquest, surnames were added to English names. But these names were strictly meant to describe the person or say something about who they already are. So usually they would be a form of patronym. Son of John would be 
Johnson, so it's like Sam Johnson. Occupational, so like John Carpenter, John Taylor. By character or traits, so like John Long. Or location, so John from Acton would be John Acton. By the 14th century, names gradually became hereditary. And that's mainly due to the fact that like the occupation in a family would be passed down upon the generations. So like if your father was a carpenter, you're probably going to be a carpenter. But the appropriateness of these surnames ended up decreasing over time because people decided to do other things with their lives. So you might not be a carpenter, you might be an artist, but you would still be John Carpenter, the artist. And therefore, names were no longer really indicative of the traits of the actual person at all. In 17th century England, they began to believe that choosing a name had to be done with utmost purpose and care. So Puritan names like Grace, Faith, Fortitude, all those kinds of names became very popular because people believed and hoped that it would inspire the bearers of these names to live their life according to such values. Later in the 20th century, patronyms that matched a person's actual occupation or something about them became very noteworthy. So you would hear about it in the newspaper if John Carpenter actually ended up being a carpenter. So before 1800, there were four first names that referred to over half of all English men. Harry, Oliver, Jack, and Charlie. Then the 1960s happened, a decade of tremendous political and social shifts. More Americans started to reject conformity and embrace individualism around this time. So for example, you have the name Jasmine. But then you also have Jasmine, 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 Jasmine. And that affected both England and America because England then, the top four names that I just mentioned, they only accounted for about 17% of all boys. So as baby names started to become more a matter of choice rather than tradition, it kind of started to reveal more about the people doing the choosing than about the people for whom the name was chosen. So, and what if this is the very first time that you've heard the name Jessica Swanza? I made that up. There's some cool stuff that we actually do in our heads to assume things about a person when their name is all that we know about them. One is called the sound symbolism effect. This is where depending on just how your name sounds, people will assume certain qualities of your personality, of your characteristics. And specifically, if your name has more sonorant sounds, like Anne or Owen, then people will expect you to be high in agreeableness, emotionality, and conscientiousness. Conversely, if your name has more voiceless stop consonants, so if your name is like Kate or Kirk, then people will expect you to be more high in like extroversion and lower in the other things. So now, Recall the moment when I said that you can only guess a name if the person uses that name socially. Also recall the fact that your parents are the ones who choose a given name for you. There are times when people don't like their name very much and choose to either go by a nickname or an entirely separate exclusive name. And there are plenty of reasons for doing this. Some people don't associate with the gender of their given name. Some people get tired of people always mispronouncing their name. Some people get bullied over their name or the culture that's associated with their name. Some people get mistreated by their family or their culture. All these reasons are basically something that happened to the person to want to disassociate from everything relating to their name and what it represents. They want to remove themselves from everything that's tied to their experience with that name and start over with a new one defining it as they go. Alternatively, there's also the cases where you don't really have anything against your given name, but you still feel like another name might suit you better in a different context. There is the popular singer and performer, Virka Serdyuchka. This is a man who dresses up in drag as a shiny, hilarious grandma on stage, but then transforms back into a shy, quiet, and reserved man as Andrei Danilka. There's a big reason why actors, singers, and other personalities create a new stage name. It's in order to cultivate a new persona where they can be anything that they want to be without ties to any of the stuff associated with and expected from whatever name that they're given. All right, so in conclusion, ultimately, every single thing that happens to us influences who we are in the moment and who we grow up to be in the future. There isn't one thing not even your name, that will determine your job, 
who you marry, how happy you are in life, or if you buy the next gen iPhone. All of the claims that were made in studies like, oh, if your name is this, then you are more likely to that, those are all tendencies seen at the aggregate level and don't necessarily apply to any particular one individual. The only two true effects that your name does have on you are these. The preconceived assumptions and stereotypes people will have about you when exposed to only your name and no other information about you. And two, the slight voluntary variations that you make to your appearance due to either self-fulfilling or self-defeating prophecies. So depending on if you like or dislike your name. Everything else about you, the rest of your appearance, your personality, your traits, your talents, all of those qualities will override any first solely name-based impression because your identity is truly self-chosen. Otherwise, we'd all be horribly identical robots. Other people may give us labels, but an identity can only come from us. Now, if you've made it to the end of this video, thank you so much, and I invite you to consider some personal questions. Take the time to review on your own identity, and what do you base it off? Your job, your relationships, your talents, the number of followers you have on social media? How does your name and the name that you go by change over time? Do you choose a different name for yourself based on who you're talking to or where you are? If you're comfortable, comment down below and share your thoughts and experiences. I'd love to hear them. I'm actually going to comment my own answer to these questions down below, so while you're down there, you might as well join me. But yeah, that concludes this video. Please make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Comment down below what you think I should do next or what you thought about this one. Follow me on all my social media and most importantly, subscribe to my channel for more videos from me every week. I'll see you next time. Bye.